Nez, Gavin and St John, I'm going to deal with each of your cases in turn. Nez, you are a talented singer and I know you're talented because St John, who's qualified in these things, took the view that he could make you a star. This was the first time, although this is the first time you've heard this today, this was the first time that St John had ever represented an artist as a manager. Now, whether he said that to you or not, it's wholly irrelevant because, Ness, there's going to be lessons for a lot of people who look <coughs> upon this case and ask themselves a question, how is it that a young artist can find herself in this situation? And the answer is, you're not the first, the last, and I suspect there are numerous people out there that sign agreements with people, not fully understanding what they're getting into, and ultimately end up in court with a judge telling them, just like I'm going to have to tell you in due course, that you don't have a legal case to bring against St John, even if I think that you should. Now, as you signed a contract with St John, I'm satisfied that that contract was read to you. But if you were concerned, as a sensible person, of age, you were an adult, in those circumstances, whether someone was a family member or a friend, it was up to you to inquire further, perhaps with independent legal advice, perhaps with a friend, about what you were getting into. In any event, the contract that you signed made perfectly clear, sadly, that all promotional material ultimately was your responsibility and that in due course if you made any money or not St John as your manager was entitled to claw any money that was spent back from you therefore your claim against him for expenses relating to promotion of £4,650 has to be dismissed and then turn to your counterclaim against Nez St John as you're entitled to do pursuant to clause 6 in the contract you're claiming £2,800 for travel. In order to prove that to me, you have to provide cogent evidence so that I'm more sure than not that the money you spent on travel related to your commercial relationship with NES. The evidence that you provided me is clearly insufficient to discharge that burden. Therefore, your claim for £2,800 for travel is also dismissed. I now turn to you, Gavin. Gavin, you don't want to be called an artist. Like it or not, however, in law, you are an artist. You create artistic products, including songs and also instrumentation. You are a lyricist by the sounds of things and also a rather talented producer of R&B music. You had a limited contract with St John. That contract specifies quite clearly that the work that you did for writing songs, for producing those songs, especially the instrumentation, and for the studio time, was due the moment you delivered the EP, the disc. The reality of that contract is that it does not specify when that EP has to be delivered. So, the fact that when it ultimately came to St John, he couldn't make commercial use of it, which I find dubious, but he says he couldn't, is wholly irrelevant. And Gavin, therefore, you're entitled to all of the work you did, and I'm perfectly satisfied you should be awarded the entirety of your claim. So this court awards you £3,325 and says it's very cheap at the price. This is a lesson for everybody involved. These relationships are complex and difficult. Do not sign anything ever unless you're absolutely sure about what you're getting into. That's the award of this court. Gavin, you're entitled to your £3,325. The rest of the cases are dismissed.